Katmai National Park encompasses over 4 million acres in southern Alaska and is famous worldwide for two things. First, the bears that frequent the park in search of salmon every summer, and second for the Valley of 10,000 Smokes, which was one of the largest volcanic eruptions in the 20th century. A visit to this park is expensive and time consuming, but if you're looking for an adventure, then it's hard to think of a more unique place I have ever been. This is the most I've ever felt like I was in Jurassic Park or something. We're in these like little remote trails and it's kind of like just talk loud and uh, make noise so that the bears know you're coming. <laughs> Here's all the information on our visit to Katmai National Park. All right, so the first adventure is just getting to Katmai National Park. We were in Anchorage and so we took a short flight over to King Salmon on Alaska Air. You can pay for a float plane that'll actually fly you all the way to Katmai, but it was almost double the price for us, so that's why we did the flight to King Salmon and then the boat over. Here we go! As with any flight you take around Alaska, I highly recommend getting a window seat as the views are pretty much always incredible. Let's go see some bears! Uh, we got a little bit of ways to go before that. <laughs> when we arrived in King Salmon, we were greeted by a tiny airport and there's basically only one flight in and one flight out each day. Did you find us some lunch? That's what a $35 pizza looks like in King Salmon. $35 yeah, it looks pretty good though. It's not bad. We had to wait 45 minutes for the shuttle bus to pick us up and take us to our boat, so that's why Amy grabbed a pizza. Next, we did the 15 minute drive to the dock and we were loaded into the boat and on our way to Katmai. Made it onto the boat. Did, almost there. <laughs> the boat takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get to Katmai, depending on how choppy the water is that day. On our way there, it was calm and it was a nice easy ride that a lot of people fell asleep on and then on the way back it was very choppy and no one was really sleeping. Of course, if you want to spend more money, you can always take a float plane and skip the boat. One of the reasons that I chose to take a boat instead of a float plane other than the cost is that you can also get grounded if you're in a float plane because of weather. This happens a lot less often for the boat and I didn't want to miss out on this once in a lifetime opportunity. When we arrived, we were greeted with a bear on the beach and then ushered into bear school, which everyone is required to do before they explore Katmai. When you complete bear school, they give you a pin that you have to wear the entire time you're in the park. All right, we completed bear school and we're heading to the campground to get set up and then we're gonna go explore. Basically, we got off of the boat and there was a mama bear and three cubs right outside of the visitor center. So this could be a pretty cool experience. We have made it to the campground entering the electric fence. It's a bear deterrent, not, not uh, fully bear safe. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention we're camping and there can be up to 2,000 bears that live in this park. All right, we got all of our stuff set up and we are ready to head out to the falls. Finally! It's been a long day already. It's like 2.30, we left the Anchorage at nine today. So it takes a while to get here. Hopefully there's some bears. All of the food has to be put into the food cache, so we're grabbing our section right here to leave our stuff, and then the gear is in the gear cache on the other side. We have to eat all our food in a designated area. You can't bring any snacks or anything other than water when you go out to the falls. The campground also has pit toilets, and it has a place where you can store your gear when you're not at the campground. So if you need jet oil fuel, people leave them as long as it's past the date that you're there. They let you use it. So we didn't bring any because we can't on the plane, but there's lots to use. All right, we are leaving the safety of the electric fence behind, spending the next few hours exploring Katmai. I'm really excited about this, even though it's a late year for the salmon coming in, it's probably not going to be the best with a ton of bears, but I think we're going to see some and I think it's going to be pretty epic. From the campground, it's a little over a quarter mile to get to the visitor center and the restaurant. We checked out the restaurant first just to see what it was like and it's a pretty cool spot as there's a big fire pit and you can sit and relax in there whenever you'd like. It's about a mile and a quarter walk from the lobby to get all the way out to the falls but there's multiple viewing areas along the way. And there's multiple locked gates along the way as well. <laughs> Almost immediately when you leave the restaurant you'll be walking on this boardwalk and this is another great place to see bears. We didn't see any this time so we just continued on towards the falls. As you're walking, it's basically nothing but the sound of float planes everywhere. 
So we were trying to walk to Brooks Falls, but there's a bear on the trail who's been sitting there and they told us we have to go back and wait out here because they have to clear a bear jam, I guess, because there's a lot of people waiting and it's been there for an hour. So see how this goes. Maybe we'll make it to Brooks Falls. We're stopped again and there's so many mosquitoes. Oh, hey, finally can go. They basically stopped us in Mosquito Alley to wait. <laughs> They were everywhere. <laughs> Before we could even get to the falls, we were greeted by another bear right along the trail. We barely had time to get off the trail before he walked right by us. That bear was like two feet away from us. Huge. <laughs> Needless to say, this was a crazy adventure just to try to get out to the falls to see the bears. We're on the bear platform and we got 30 minutes to see our bears. And then hopefully we can stay longer later when all the day people are gone. All right, so a little information on Brooks Falls and the bear viewing experience. First, most people visit this area via day trip, so from about 10 to 4 p.m., it's gonna be completely full. They basically give you a pager like you're at an olive garden or something, and then when it's your turn, you get to go out to the viewing platform for about 30 minutes. Of course, you never know how many bears are gonna be there, so you basically just need to do the mile and a half walk and then hope that you get lucky. We went right in the middle of July, which is supposed to be the best time, but unfortunately this year the salmon were a little bit late. So there were always a few bears there, but they weren't standing at the top of the falls catching the salmon in their mouth like that iconic National Geographic shot you've probably seen. They were still getting salmon though, and we saw them eat plenty of salmon while we were there. The 30 minute time limit is just an honor system and they ask you to leave when your 30 minutes are up. The 30 minutes goes incredibly fast when you're viewing bears. We're heading to our second platform. This is the Riffles platform. This platform doesn't have the time limit that Brooks Falls has, so you can stay here for as long as you'd like. Come on, little buddy, get a fish. Oh, oh yeah! I'm pretty sure this was the bear known as Grazer. They all have names and they have huge followings on the webcam that you can find online. Grazer was actually the bear that won Fat Bear Week this year as well, which is the bear that gained the most weight during the salmon feed of the summer. She was pretty incredible and we saw her catch probably six or seven fish in that one hour we were watching. Currently running back to the other platform in the rain as the babies and the mama went up there. I want to see if I can catch them up close again before they leave. I don't know if I'll make it or not though. I don't even really know how to describe this experience. It's just exhilarating the entire time. You're running back and forth between platforms, trying to wait for bears to come, and then just getting shocked when one pops out of the woods. She's like, where'd that fish go? Since we were there later in the day, the day trippers had left and we didn't have to wait for the platform again. We just could go out whenever we wanted. In terms of wildlife experiences I've had in National Park, this is by far the top. It is pretty incredible. And this isn't even peak. I can't even imagine if there was 17 bears on the falls like there were a few years ago at this time. All right, so we spent the last three hours out there and that's an experience I'll never forget. I mean, that was just mind blowing how cool that was. What do you think? Absolutely amazing. I had no idea what to expect and I can't believe we were out there for three hours in the rain. It was so awesome to see all that. Uh, the time went by like this. And we're gonna go get some dinner and then we're probably gonna come back out here. You can stay until 10 if you're camping. So I wanna see it again. As we made our way back to the boardwalk, we were greeted with a couple bears out in the water. Look at that bear just swimming in the water out there. That's funny. Here you could also see the salmon as they were getting ready to start their movement upstream. There were a lot of salmon here, but unfortunately they weren't moving up yet. If you're wanting to eat here, then it's just buffet style and there's lots of different options. So we brought a backpacker's meal, but Amy convinced me that I needed to get the lodge food. How is it? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it is actually really good. After having dinner, we are heading back out. It's about 7.30. They close the platform at 10. 
So we're gonna spend another couple hours checking out the bears before we call it a night. We were told the bears are usually a little bit more active in the morning and the afternoon, and we saw a decent amount of them from the boardwalk. Also, I saw a fisherman snag a salmon and I saw a bear start swimming towards it. I've never seen a fisherman move that fast and apparently bears can't swim that fast either. It's so hilarious, I have this little GPS device where I can text my dad and my mom on this trip since they're watching the kids and they have a live cam of all of the bears and so my dad's texting me and being like, hey, there's three bears, go out there and see them. But yeah, if you wanna see the bears and you're not coming out here, check the live cams, I'll leave them in the description. Plus it's basically all day sun right now, so it doesn't even go down until like 11.45 tonight. It's crazy, you see these are like the paths the bears take to get to the falls area, and then here's our path. When we came out here this time, there was no way to get to the platforms. Plus there was only a dozen or so total people that were out there watching the bears. This is definitely the way to do it. It's easy to move around the platforms, it's easy to get whatever view you want, and it's just cool to be able to see the bears without trying to fight for a spot. As we're watching these bear clips, here's a little bit more information about the bears. They say that there are 2,200 bears that live in this park. The bears come down to this spot in the summer because of the massive amount of salmon that run. They basically eat their fill and gather up enough food to get them through the winter hibernation. The rangers told us that a male bear can eat up to 30 fish a day, which is almost 100 pounds. It's so crazy to see the bears just hanging out right underneath where everybody's at. Amy and I just made our way back and forth between the two platforms, watching the bears eat all the salmon that they could catch in the late afternoon light. This was when we saw the most bears we had seen at once, which was eight. In case you're wondering, this is the webcam that they use to see the bears. There it is. All right, well, it's not even 10 o'clock yet, but everybody decided to leave. So it's just Amy and I on the Brooks Falls platform. I don't know if they know something we don't know about bear attacks at nighttime or something, but it is only 9.45 right now. Yeah. There were only three bears at this time, but it was still pretty surreal to be the only people on this famous platform watching the bears. One of the bears just kept catching fish and then hiking up to about 10 feet away from the viewing platform to eat them. I have to say it was the best way we could have ended our day. All right, Amy and I are saying goodbye to Brooks Falls. It's about 10 minutes before they close. And man, this is just an incredible day. Yeah, I didn't think it could get better, but round two was pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, they're eating fish and everything. I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. It's indescribable how beautiful this area is. Honestly, if you're able to get a campsite, that's the way to do it. There's no one out here experiencing this beautiful area. Protect us from the bears, Amy. Would you like me to sing a tune? <laughs> yeah. The walk back was uneventful and we made it to the boardwalk without seeing any other bears. The sun was just setting behind the mountains though and it was a beautiful time to be wandering around Katmai. Almost back to the campsite, but we had to stop off for that view. Incredible day. We'll see you tomorrow. Also, pro tip, bring an eye mask if you're anything like me and have trouble sleeping when it's bright outside. I got up early and headed over to the lodge to see if we could get on a flight to Valley of 10,000 Smokes while Amy made breakfast. So I was hoping to do a flight seat today. They didn't know how the weather was going to be because of the rain, but it looks like it's pretty clear today. They said they can get us in on one if we go now. I have to run back to the campground, get Amy and run back, so hopefully it works out. After rushing back, I skipped breakfast, got Amy, and we headed right back to the plane. Amy's dream has been to ride in a float plane, so she's getting to fulfill a bucket list item right now. We're going on a float plane to Valley of a Thousand Smokes. If you have multiple days here, you can actually take a bus to Valley of 10,000 Smokes and hike around, but it takes almost a full day, and we weren't able to do that and get back in time for the boat. 
Since this was something I really wanted to see, we decided to take a plane, which was pricey at around $300 a person, but which gave us an amazing view of the scarred landscape from the volcano eruption. The trip starts by going over a lush green forest before you see the desolate wasteland of Valley of 10,000 Smokes. The Valley of 10,000 Smokes was created by a volcanic eruption in 1912, which was the largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. The 40 square mile valley was covered in ash and basically nothing can grow there to this day. It's hard for your brain to even comprehend it when you see it from above as you go from seeing trees and a river to basically nothing but brown as far as the eye can see. This was the reason I really wanted to take a plane as I felt like you could only experience the vastness of this eruption by seeing it from above. The valley is so desolate that it was even used to train astronauts in the 1960s as it resembled the surface of the moon. The weather wasn't too great for us to fly more up the valley towards the caldera, so we had to see what we could and then turn around and head back. Even as we left the valley, it was still amazing to see Katmai from above like this. The massive mountains and valleys and the beautiful blue lake gave a greater appreciation of this big park. Plus, the experience ended with a landing on the water, which was Amy's bucket list item, and as we pulled up to Katmai, there was a bear right there on the beach. All right, we're back from our float plane experience. We got about four hours left before the boat picks us up, so we're gonna go see the bears again. What do you think about the float plane? I can't believe I got to do that before I had coffee this morning. <laughs> bucket list item. <laughs> All right, one last trip to Brooks Falls. Just a reminder that it's 1.2 miles from the visitor center, so it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get out here every time you want to come out. So yeah, you got to get one of these now because it's so busy, which is unfortunate. It has been so nice to not have to worry about this. Since we had to wait for a while to get to the main platform, we went to the secondary platform and there weren't too many bears out. The bears aren't super active this morning and we've got about another 30 minutes to wait in order to get out to the main area where there's only one bear. So I think we're going to say bye to the bears since we had such a good experience yesterday and do one more thing before we leave the park. After leaving Brooks Falls, which I hope is not for the last time in my life, we made our way back to the campground. Grabbing our bag and go loading up our campsite. Get ready to go. Do you like my look? The bugs were crawling in my ears and I cut myself. So hopefully the bears don't smell blood. Amy's doing pretty good over here though. Completely fine. Maybe a couple bites. <laughs> <laughs> Saying goodbye to our campsite and this is what the spots look like, just FYI. There's little areas where they flattened them out. They're all around this grassy area and then you can see the fence, electric fence right there. They also have a fire pit with firewood you can use if you want to chop it. That's one of the areas. There's the gear cache. And there's the food cache. And here's where you wash your dishes and get clean water for your water bottle. We had a couple hours to kill and some people told us that they saw bears from a kayak, so we decided we'd take a kayak out before ending our time. So I was thinking we haven't had enough adventure and Andy got Amy to go on a kayak with me. Oh, come on, we might be able to see some bears along the water and look at how perfect this day is. Just gonna cruise and let you do all the work. <laughs> How's that different than normal? <laughs> oh. This is such a beautiful day in Katmai. We're just watching float planes land, watching fish jump. Maybe we'll be able to see a bear, but just these views are worth it. We're kayaking and there's literally a bear walking on the shore. This is a pretty incredible experience. <laughs> Never in my life did I think I was gonna kayak next to a bear. We maintained the recommended safe distance and just cruised along the shoreline watching the bear walk. It was pretty much the perfect exclamation point to our time in Katmai. Last sighting of the bear before he goes behind the boat. Bye bear, thanks for hanging out with us for a little bit. I can now check off, see a bear while kayaking for my bucket list. Was that on your bucket list this morning? It wasn't, but <laughs> it's a good ad. 
We made it back. Amy's doing the work again. <laughs> That's all you need to do. <laughs> this is how you know it's a crazy experience. There's an electric fence for the kayaks so that the bears don't play with them. And with that, our epic 24 hours in Katmai National Park is done. One of the best national park experiences I have ever had. You too? Absolutely. I think it just made it into my top three of national parks. <laughs> you can see more Alaska content by clicking in the description and we will see you on the next one. And just to end our time with a bang, when we were waiting for the boat, we saw another bear swimming in the water and it came and walked along the beach so that we had to go back up to the visitor center and wait for it to clear. Also, if you have to wait a few hours for your flight like we did, the Sockeye Saloon, which is right next to the airport, is a nice stop. It's super expensive because it's a small town of like 200 people and they have to get the food all the way out here, but the food was surprisingly good and they have beer. Finishing the trip with a three hour wait before our plane flight, beer and pizza. All right, that's officially it for this one. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments and we'll see you on the next video.